plant and wildlife resources. Do you know which are the spheres of the earth? Lithosphere, Hydrosphere, Atmosphere and Biosphere. Among these spheres, Biosphere is the narrow sphere where life exists. A variety of organisms exist in a thin zone of contact between lithosphere, hydrosphere and the atmosphere called biosphere. These organisms of the biosphere are broadly divided into plants, animals and microbes. How does plant resource become the backbone of our natural resources? Plant kingdom obtains energy from the sun. It provides energy to animal kingdom in the form of food. Thus, plant kingdom, in other words the flora, became the backbone of our natural resources. Plant resources provided stage for the appearance of another kind of life in the form of animals leading to the evolution of animal kingdom. Plants, flora and animals, fauna are complementary to each other. Without considering one, the existence of another is meaningless. Factors influencing plants and wildlife resources. What can be the factors that influence plants and wildlife resources? The physical environment influences the type of organisms living in an area. For example, plants and animals found on land and in water are totally different. Similarly, climatic conditions also bring about variations in the types of plants and animals found in different regions. Plants are rooted to the soil and hence they cannot move. They make physiological adjustments to seasonal changes. When compared to plants, animals are able to move from place to place. So, they stand better chance of survival. Annual migration of birds and animals is a common feature in many parts of the world. Birds fly thousands of kilometers to escape the freezing cold during winter. They go back to their homes before the beginning of summer. It is understood that climate is the most important factor that influences plant and animal resources. Forest types. Forests make the bulk of our natural vegetation. Forests are found from the equator to the areas beyond 60 degrees north and south. But the types of trees found in these forests vary depending upon the range of temperature. Forests are classified broadly into evergreen and deciduous forests. Evergreen forests. Trees in these forests do not shed their leaves simultaneously during any season of the year. Evergreen forests may also be grouped into Tropical evergreen forests, mid-latitude evergreen forests, Mediterranean and coniferous forests. Tropical evergreen forests. Let us cite some important features of tropical evergreen forests. These forests are found in the areas of heavy rainfall and abundant sunshine. Hot and humid conditions favor luxuriant growth of a variety of vegetation. Trees have broad leaves to permit transpiration of surplus moisture. These forests 
consist of hardwood species and are evergreen. Important species are bamboo, cinchona, rubber, ebony, mahogany, sandalwood and rosewood. Tropical evergreen forests are available in Amazon Basin, Zaire Basin, Malaysia, Myanmar, Kampuchea, Vietnam, Indonesia and New Guinea. Mid-Latitude Evergreen Forests These forests are found on the eastern margins of continents. These forests contain hardwood trees with broad leaves. Oak, eucalyptus and wattle are some economically important trees of these forests. South China, Southeastern USA, South Brazil, East Coast of South Africa and Southeastern Australia have such forests. Mediterranean Forests This type of vegetation is found largely in the areas around the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy, Spain, South France, Greece, California and Southern Africa. Trees are adapted to seasonal changes in temperature. They withstand the dry summer without shedding their leaves. Plants therefore have spiny, waxy and small leaves to reduce transpiration. Plants largely grow in winter and they have to be protected from the severity of heat during summer. Trees are not thick and have broad leaves. They are of medium height. Important species are olive, oak, figs, pine, fir, cedar, oranges, grapes and lemon etc. Coniferous forests. These forests extend as a continuous belt around the North Polar region and high mountains in Europe, Asia and North America. Due to low rainfall and severe cold winters, growth of plant life is very slow. The trees are evergreen with small needle-like leaves to reduce transpiration and to protect themselves from cold winter. The trees have soft wood. These soft wood trees are pine, cedar and fir. Deciduous forests Deciduous forests are those in which trees shed their leaves in a particular season in order to conserve loss of moisture through transpiration. Tropical Deciduous Let us understand some important features of tropical deciduous forest. These forests are found in subtropical regions with a distinct dry season. Trees shed their leaves during summer. These forests are comparatively less dense than tropical evergreen forests. Teak, Sal, Shisham, Neem and Mango trees are the main species of trees grown here. Monsoon Asia parts of Central America, Brazil and Northern Australia have such forests. Mid-Latitude Deciduous These forests occur in the coastal temperate regions. Western Europe, Northeastern China, Japan, Northeastern USA, New Zealand and Southern Chile have such forests. Trees shed their leaves in winter to protect themselves from cold. 
because during winter temperature in these areas falls below 6 degrees Celsius. Birch, ash and oak are some of the important trees of these forests. Uses of forests Forest resources can be used for different purposes. Commercial utilization of temperate evergreen and coniferous forests is very high. Norway, Sweden, Finland and Canada are important exporters of several forest products such as paper, wood pulp and newsprint. In India and other monsoon countries of South and Southeast Asia, rosewood, sandalwood, teak and mahogany are the important species which have been used economically to a large extent. Forests protect animals from wind, rain, storms, cold, heat and also prevents soil erosion. They provide fruits, food products, wood, timber and industrial products. Wildlife Resources Animals, birds and other organisms which live in a natural habitat are termed as wildlife. All the living organisms in the biosphere are interdependent and they are a part of the food chain. Conservation of Wildlife Why does wildlife need to be conserved? Wildlife plays an important role in an ecosystem and the substance of life on the earth. Many species of animals and plants have great use to man. Besides, they maintain the ecological balance. Hence, it is necessary to conserve the wildlife. There are different steps for conservation of wildlife. They are Establishment of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Legal protection of wildlife and endangered species. Each and every attempt should be made to conserve the endangered species. Threatened species should be restored by providing suitable environmental conditions and increasing reproductive capacity of those species. Habitats should be safeguarded. Conservation of forests. Why is it important to conserve forests? Forests play a very important role in the life and economy of a nation. The increasing destruction and degradation of forest areas lead to heavy erosion of the topsoil, erratic rainfall and reoccurring floods. Due to these reasons, it is important to conserve forests. Now, let us list some important measures for conservation of forests. Diversion of forest lands for other purposes have to be prevented. Reckless cutting of forests needs to be checked. Steps have to be taken to stop shifting practice of cultivation. Forest fire is another cause of forest depletion which needs to be controlled effectively. Afforestation has to be taken up effectively. Fossil fuels why are coal, mineral oil and natural gas called fossil fuels? Because of their organic origin, these are called fossil fuels. They are produced from plant and animal materials and are forms of stored solar energy. How are fossils formed? Fossils are formed 
by the decomposition of marine creatures, minute plants and animals, buried and sedimented for millions of years. Here we will study how large deposits of oil and gas are formed. Under the presence of overlying rocks, the oil and gas are squeezed out of the source rocks. They move up through available spaces. However, if they are trapped beneath a layer of impermeable rock, oil or gas deposits are formed. The rocks that contain large deposits of oil and gas are called reservoir rocks. There is a possibility that the alternative sources of energy might replace fossil fuels in future. The alternative sources of energy are hydropower, geothermal, nuclear, solar and wind power. Distribution of fossil fuels We can list out some widely used fossil fuels. Coal, mineral oil, natural gas, petrol, kerosene, etc. Coal Coal, which is a conventional source of energy, is found as one of the layers or seams in the sedimentary rocks. The thickness of the coal seams depends upon the nature of the plant cover. The quality of coal depends upon the depth, pressure and heat which the buried plant cover was subjected to. The coal which we are using today is formed millions of years ago when giant ferns and swamps got buried under the layers of earth. Coal is therefore referred to as buried sunshine. Coal is of four types. They are anthracite which contains more than 80% carbon. Bituminous contains 60 to 80% carbon. Lignite contains 50 to 60% of carbon contents. Peat contains less than 50% of carbon. Coal World Distribution Russia, USA, China, Australia, parts of Western Europe, South Africa and India. In India, Gondwana Coal Deposits located in Damodar Valley, Jharkhand and West Bengal. Important coal fields are Jharia, Rani Ganj, Bokaro. Other coal fields are Godavari, Mahanadi, Sam and Vardha valleys. Tertiary coal deposits are located in northeastern states. Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. Mineral oil, world distribution, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Venezuela, Mexico, Libya, Nigeria, UK, Norway, Denmark, Germany and the Netherlands. India, Assam, Tikboy, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Gulf of Khambat and in the Arabian Sea of Maharashtra coast. Natural Gas Natural gas is found with petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface. It can be used as a domestic and industrial fuel. Russia, Norway, UK and the Netherlands are the major producers of natural gas. Compressed natural gas, CNG, is a popular, eco-friendly automobile fuel as 
it causes less pollution than petroleum and diesel. Petroleum Petroleum is found between the layers of rocks and is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas. This is then sent to refineries which process the crude oil and produce a variety of products like diesel, petrol, kerosene, wax, plastics and lubricants. Petroleum and its derivatives are called black gold as they are very valuable. Summary Minerals and power resources provide the basis for industrial development. Minerals are of two types, metallic and non-metallic. Some important metallic minerals are iron, copper, bauxite, manganese, gold, uranium, thorium, etc. The non-metallic resources are coal, petroleum, natural gas, etc. Some non-conventional resources of energy are solar, wind, tidal and geothermal energy and some conventional sources of energy are coal, mineral oil, natural gas, atomic minerals, water, etc. India is rich in minerals and power resources. Minerals and power resources play a dominant role in our lives and these resources take a very long time to be renewed. So, we should use these resources judiciously, keeping the future generations in mind. The natural growth of plant life is natural vegetation. The amount of sunlight and rainfall received affects the growth of plant life. There are different types of natural vegetation in the world. The natural vegetation and forest cover needs to be protected. Animals, birds and the organisms living in a natural habitat are termed as wildlife. Cutting down of forest area has created risk to wildlife. If this is not checked, wildlife may decrease or may even perish.